Hasra, Wad Lafan. Welcome everyone to Yafna Ouiji. It's Yafna. Today, we have the privilege of meeting with Leah Dorian, a Métis artist living in Kist Bananik, Cree Métis territory, now known as Prince Albert. This territory is located along the North Saskatchewan River. Leah, tell us more about yourself. Well, I'm really happy that I live where I do. I'm so close to the beautiful North Saskatchewan River. I have River Métis heritage, and my family has lived along this river system for so many generations. Our portrayed history roots as Métis people. We were always moving along that river all four seasons, you know, canoe in the summer, dog team in the winter. And my dad grew up in Cumberland House, Saskatchewan, running a dog team, working a trap line. And then he moved um, to Prince Albert later in his life out of the construction industry. So he was a good, hardworking Métis man, loved the land, became a carpenter. And so we've always had a home near the North Saskatchewan River, and I've been around building and construction and making things my entire life. Wow. Well, how after sharing that and how after being here with us today? Let's see one of the first pieces you're willing to share with us today. I do. I've got a little backdrop back here. I might even just, pardon me, move it a little closer. This is my, see the size of this. <laughs> this is That's one huge. of my paintings that really features the um, teachings of the moon. So I'm just going to put it back and I can talk a bit about the symbolism. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I just wanted people to get the sheer size and relationship to me of the actual yeah. painting. And then you'll have a copy, of course, that you can, you know, show that's a little closer that I took. But this really helps follow my introduction because you notice the women are doing a moon ceremony on the river on canoes they're literally on the water in prayer and they're singing they're praying they have an offering we do a lot of clay pottery because of the river mud and so there's a, a little girl holding the, the offering vessel clay pot and you have the women singing and drumming and i have like lunar moths coming in to the sky and going out to the moon to take all those beautiful prayers and songs out into the universe because the moon, Nokom Tupskal Pisan, the grandma, the moon is like such an important part of working with the water. And as River Metis, we were taught that from our First Nations grandmothers, these beautiful traditions of bonding us to nature and law. And as me as a Metis person, like those grandmother teachings are what root me to this land. You know, I have to go through the, the you know, it was women who made us Métis, like the Indigenous women to the land here. You know, the men came from other places, but it's the grandmothers that birthed us. So we're very matriarchal and woman-centered as Métis people in our earliest generations. So I really wanted to visually represent the woman in prayer on water in very old ways of being women. And I felt as a Métis artist, I really, really wanted to give that respect to women's spirituality and represent it in a modern, interpretive, beautiful way. And our ceremonies are coming back. Maybe we're not all going on the canoes to do them, which I want to do. Now that I painted the art, I'm like, well, I have to go on a canoe and do my ceremonies with my elders before we get too old to do that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. And I love that the moons have like this gold reflective look to them. And you mentioned that it was you know, on the the river. Is that the North Saskatchewan River? Yes, that would be like my representation. We have a lot of the spruce trees. Um, some parts of the river have like really nice pine uh, near the Nipawin area. And so, yeah, I just kind of have that reflection and, and I have a real bright, kind of a semi-abstract style, very beadwork-like, very bright colors, like the Métis parkas and clothing and beadwork that I grew up with. So, yeah, I really had fun using metallics to get the shine. I used to bead on my paintings, but my hands, I just can't do it. It's so much work to bead on a painting and you literally have to be done and then punch holes. So I'm like, uh, I can't take the risk anymore. <laughs> I don't have the skills I once, fine motor movement I once did. 
in my 20s and 30s and 40s. Well, it's it's stunning. And this is one of the one of your complete pieces, correct? Yes, it's actually complete. I'm happy with it. I'm ready to for it to go into a, a larger body of work. I have an archo um, featuring 13 moon teachings. Um, my elder in my life, Auntie Elsie, was the guiding elder behind this art show. It was so fun because my Auntie Elsie she actually really does the traditional but she really allows us contemporary women to interpret so things stay alive and growing and creative which i'm like wow what a wonderful woman you know she'll be 80 right away and <laughs> she's like so open to women's creativity to keep things creative changing but still rooted in in truth and tradition oh wow Oh, uh, that's great. And your second piece, I, I, I think I remember you saying it was an in-progress piece, which I'm excited. It is. I'll move it closer. Don't mind me. Everybody else here. Let's see how good I can do this. Can you see it a little better? Just yeah, so. that looks great. Anyway, okay. <laughs> You can see again uh, the size of me, right? Like these are quite nice large paintings. Like I'm almost six feet tall, and like these paintings oh, wow. are, you know, pretty close to my height in so many ways. So this, yeah, this one is called uh, Moon Lodge Prayer, and again, it's um, my auntie Elsie is um, a knowledge keeper and a woman's traditional ceremonial keeper. You probably figured that out. <laughs> I didn't really say it, but I think it's pretty clear. And she's the one who does all the moon ceremonies. She does all the coming of age ceremonies, all the traditional naming ceremonies, and she does all that beautiful bundle, um, helping our women and then the nieces and the new grandchildren. And this is an actual representation of our coming back to the Moon Lodge to help, um, you know, women have that time out from society. We used to have like every month women going into their lodges, you know, doing that meditation and self care. And, I decided, well, I want to represent our little prayer lodges, our meditative prayer lodges, and just show how it helps us be well and medicine and connects us to the moon and that we have a, a monthly cycle of being well. And because I only came to it later in my life, uh, Auntie took years to acquire those ceremonies, and I, she didn't have the earn them till I was older. <laughs> so I missed all those early stages I would have a little girl. I didn't get all those ceremonies. So it's kind of been the newer generation in our family communities getting them. But me, it was kind of like the colonial gap, you know. And God bless Auntie for going and getting that stuff, like at a later age and bringing it back, you know. Beautiful, beautiful gift to the, the community, the family, and the region. Yeah, that is a beautiful gift. I'm curious about what I'm seeing in there. So I'm seeing bears in the moon. I assume those are bears. Are they bears? And then they're know, bears. Right. And I know that there's bears in the ground. And yeah. the three women in the center, the one in the very middle, she, they she has like a connection going into the ground with the bears. And the two on the outside have what I assume would be staffs. Is there a different name for those? Yeah, like staffs. different moon staffs to just yeah. really channel and bring kind of the earth and moon energy together. I have to try to represent the interplay of the moon with the earth and how we are like on the surface where the, they flow between us women. So I'm like, okay, dig deeply. How can you visually represent that interplay of earth energy and moon energy? And so I have to really be creative using like the swirls and you'll notice the connections like the bears are so earth connected medicine but there's also we have some of our moons are named after the bear so this would be like the, the bear moon and then all the teachings so i have the two connections the bear moon to the, the earth little bears in the earth and i have like the lodge there the fasting lodges and i do have butterfly symbolism for that female you know cyclical um representation of women always being in cycles always in cycles yeah you can really see the different the connections in this piece here you're, you're clearly demonstrating how all of these beautiful things are, are connected and in reciprocal relationships with each other right i love that thank you i love balance and i like the twos like 
things in twos and I'm really happy with the elder grandmother in the center with the two younger women like you can interpret it any way you want but I always like having my elders like glued in there and they sandwiched because there are rocks there are glue <laughs> so right great well we have time for another piece and I know this one is also an in progress one which I'm excited to see okay switcheroo Gosh, for easels. Yes. This is still got a lot of work to do. The other two are like the other one's done. This one, the other one I showed you is really close. This is called berry fasting, and this is the coming of age. So there's like still lots of little detail and layers to go. But I have like the strawberries, and because that's a berry, the fasting for berry from berries for a year is a big part of it. So I really wanted the berry fasting and then breaking fasts and the role of women to help other young girls come into their womanhood cycle and celebration so i have lots of like life swirling and love like hearts like hearts because to me like oh my gosh our young girls need so much love and heart to enter womanhood and not feel the shame and the the fear that has been kind of passed down through the colonial traumas that we've had especially here we've had a lot of shame-based systems with the church and stuff come through real harshly and I'm just so done with that shame-based system so I'm like I am creating art that's in a space of love and peace and helping girls release any kind of baggage around shame beautiful a question I have um like I keep saying it's a privilege to see these in progress pieces and I'm wondering about when when do you know when it's done how do you know when the last detail has been put in and you're like, I'm happy with this. This is how yeah. it's going to be. That's the artist dilemma, right? Like when do I back away and not push it too far and wreck everything? Um, I just kind of really use that intuitive, like it just feels done. There's nothing else I can give. It is complete. I need to birth this and move on. And that's kind of what I use as my intuitive marker. I, and I really get it, as I've been painting now for so many years, the intuition gets easier to know when to walk away. Uh, it wasn't always that easy when I was younger um, painting, but now as I get older, it's like, okay, you're done. I can't do more to you. <laughs> you go out to the world and grow up. <laughs> you just wait for the ancestors to tell you you're yes. done. That is We're good like done. that. It's easier. It takes the pressure off so much too. Totally. And all the different people, I'm seeing all the different elders and the young woman in the paintings. So when I look at them and when you're drawing in these people, are, are you thinking of anyone in specific? Like who are these people to you and what's your connection to the specific people you're incorporating into these? Yes, uh, I have nieces. Uh, I, I'm a mother of a son, believe it or not. Like I have a boy <laughs> and it's like, but I come from a female centered family. So I have like nieces, I have a beautiful younger sister. I've got like big extended family of women and we're very strong in the women. And it's so all these people are like when we hope my auntie hosts the ceremonies and I usually offered her to come here because I have the property. I actually have the place for her to, so she uses my property as her grounds to do her work that she does because she travels so much. So it's almost like, you know, having these little people are the intergenerational groups because auntie Elsie is like her ceremonies are so intergenerational. You get all ages out. And I think that's so nice to see with her doing her work is they're all ages, stages, and all types of background and all sorts of identities. And they're all welcome and they come to her. So I need that kind of multi-age kind of representation to feel good about my art being authentically me. Right. It's like a bunch of different worldviews coming into the same place to exchange knowledges and experiences, right? I'm not trying to change people. I just, I just, you know, this is my own little window. Everybody's got their own window. Like, who am I to tell someone how they should represent their earth? That's not my place. Who am I to tell people how to connect to the moon? They can do, do that. So it's just my little, little slice of the pie from my little part of the world and cultural background, and how I choose to interpret my interpretation of the, the moon's effect on women, the earth, and life in general. 
Oh, wow. That, that was beautiful and fantastic. I was thinking before we go, we could say what the word is for moon in our indigenous languages. So in Haida, the word for moon is hung. Can our viewers say hung? What's moon in your language, Leah? It is nokom tipskal pisim, which means grandmother night sun. Beautiful. I love that one. That's fantastic. Well, I guess in conclusion, we could say goodbye in our languages. In Haida, there's not really a, a, a goodbye as, as we seem to talk about and is common along different indigenous languages, but we can say, I will see you later, which is, which means I will see you later. And we're in the same at the Cree Michif language as we say, we never say goodbye. We only say, we'll see you later. And I'll see you later. <laughs> and it's never say goodbye. It's always see you later. See you soon. Exactly. As it should be. Mm -hmm. Awa again, Leah. It was a great treat. Thank you.